Hey everybody. So I recently watched Star Talk and I with Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, interviewing Pamela Ronald about science of GMOs and discussions about sustainable agriculture. Specifically, Neil asks, why do we need GMOs at all? There's some problems that have no real solution except genetic engineering. And genetic engineering is a technique where you can take a gene from any species and put it into a plant. So you could take a gene from a virus, for example, and put it into a plant. Well, what are some of these problems? You know, some insecticides are are very dangerous. So there's uh, the World Health Organization reports that 300,000 people die every year from overuse or misuse of insecticides. All right, now I wanna talk a little bit about what she just said here. So the problem that we need genetic engineering for is a problem that we created in dangerous insecticides that kill hundreds of thousands of people a year. There are places in the world that have fed large numbers of people without using commercial pesticides or genetic engineering. One such country is India. India actually uses the cow and the bull as a primary resource in their agriculture. Let's hear what Neil deGrasse Tyson has to say about that. We invented a cow for our purposes to get meat and to get milk. Try that again. There, there, there are no herds of wild milk cows wandering the countryside. Um... <laughs> Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> let me take this opportunity to elaborate a little bit more on what Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying there. In India, the bull plows the fields instead of tractors. In some villages, they even have a bull which pulls a grindstone and creates electricity. They also have these giant grindstones to grind up all of their flour. For an organic, non-toxic pesticide, they distill cow urine and treat it to make a functional pesticide. Cow dung is used to process biogas and methane, which are used to power the entire village. And the extra that they have, they sell to neighboring villages. Once the cow passes away naturally, they utilize the rawhide from the cow for many purposes. Let's get back to the interview. There's not really a scientific reason for excluding genetically engineered crops from organic agriculture, but there's a historical reason. Right, right. Like in India, how they've been able to feed their population for thousands of years without the use of fossil fuels, chemical pesticides, or genetic engineering. And there are many important tools that we need. And as I mentioned before, we need ecologically based farming practices, but we also need seed. That seed could be developed with many approaches. Need seeds? We've had the seeds for thousands of years. Hundreds of thousands of different seeds we've had because we cultivate them, we keep the seeds, and then we replant them. That's far more sustainable than having to genetically engineer a seed and you have to buy a new one every year. And in fact, genetic engineering has been used for 40 years and there hasn't been a single case of harm to human health or the environment. But Pamela, didn't you just say that we need the genetic engineering because the pesticides that are killing hundreds of thousands of people a year are so strong? I mean, that's what Monsanto is doing. They're making Roundup Ready crops so that they're resistant to the very strong pesticides that are killing people. So how can you say that there hasn't been a single case of harm to any human or the environment? Pamela, I have to say, I'm a little curious as to how do you get your funding with your scientific research that you're doing? You seem to be saying some very biased things. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, what do you think about that? I heard what you guys were doing was trying to get that fat grant money so you could live it up and make it rain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All the people living in mansions from grant money. Right, yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, who that National Science Foundation? <laughs> crazy with the money. Crazy money, crazy money. Uh, hmm. Pamela, why don't you just take us home here? And I think it's important to remember that these are the same organizations that most of us trust when it comes to the safety of vaccines or the effects of a cl changing climate. Oh, well, in that case, you're screwed. <laughs> well, you can see 
it's very politicized. So the scientific consensus is very clear. It doesn't matter if you live in France or if you live in the United States. The scientific community has reached a consensus. But 